alternative-powered vehicles have been hampered by a lack of product availability, a lack of charging infrastructure, and a lack of consumer demand for years. The United States government has been delaying the adoption of hydrogen technology for automobiles for quite some time. Nevertheless, the electrifying revolution has now arrived. In 20 years, we will look back and recognize that this was the tipping moment in the transition to zero-emission transportation. However, we will come to learn that it was not a single technology that enabled us to complete this transition. In today's video, we'll talk about how the government has tried to put a stop to the development of hydrogen-powered vehicles by cutting the proposed budgets. And what does the future hold for hydrogen technology? Stay tuned for that! Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder that subscribing is free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar content. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. General Motors engineers pumped kilograms of compressed hydrogen gas into two GM vehicles in May 2007. These were one of the most technologically advanced hydrogen cell vehicles produced by the company. The fuel, which is produced by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen, was manufactured using renewable electricity from the nearby Niagara Falls. From Rochester to Terrytown, New York, the two cars traveled 482 kilometers. They didn't release any carbon dioxide during the drive. Instead, their tailpipes released only water vapor. It was the first 300-mile trip in the world that was both petroleum-free and emission-free, and it was accomplished on a single tank of hydrogen fuel. Despite the fact that the drive was historic, it didn't convince the Obama administration. It outraged enthusiasts of the technology by reducing funding for the hydrogen program, reigniting a debate over whether hydrogen cars are a pipe dream or a viable means of lessening the nation's dependence on oil. A significant budget for the hydrogen program was first slashed by 40% in 2015, making it the third consecutive year of budget cuts for the program as a whole. Later, in a major evaluation of energy technologies, the government praised hybrid and electric vehicles while remaining completely silent on hydrogen fuel cars. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu indicated at the time that the Department of Energy was putting a halt to research into automotive hydrogen fuel cells due to concerns about the expense and durability of vehicle fuel cells, the inability to store significant volumes of hydrogen fuel, the lack of a carbon-free method of generating hydrogen, and the necessity to create a nationwide network of recharging stations. In spite of widespread agreement among experts that hydrogen has the potential to play an important role in energy storage and transportation, particularly in aircraft and long-haul trucks, where switching to battery electric power may be difficult, there was a growing consensus that a more widespread hydrogen economy, which was reliant on natural gas, could be harmful to the environment. In the United States, Europe, and other parts of the world, the gas industry has also pointed to hydrogen as rationality for continuing to build gas infrastructure, such as pipelines, claiming that pipes that currently transport natural gas may in the future carry a cleaner blend of natural gas and hydrogen. Representatives from Toyota Motor Corporation spent a significant amount of time at the Washington Auto Show in 2018, explaining to interested onlookers at the Toyota Mirai display what the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is not capable of doing. By stating that, no, the vehicle does not operate on water, instead it emits water, and no, it doesn't require charging in the same way as an electric vehicle does. But without the aid of the government, in the form of frequent incentives for buyers and long-term commitments to invest in fueling station infrastructure, Toyota had a hard time marketing the vehicle to consumers who didn't comprehend the technology and persuading critics that it was a viable commercial endeavor. On the other hand, government incentives, such as a federal tax credit, played a critical role in raising the hybrid vehicle technology to the forefront. Even though the Obama administration was the first administration to reject hydrogen fuel technology, they weren't the only ones. The infrastructure of the Trump administration was also not suitable for the development of hydrogen fuel technologies. According to Tesla's Elon Musk, electric vehicles are the future. He also claims that hydrogen fuel cell cars are 
very foolish because hydrogen is difficult to produce, store, and put into a car. However, ever since the first engineers demonstrated in 1839 that electricity can be generated through the reaction of oxygen and hydrogen with platinum as a catalyst, the practical application of storing hydrogen has advanced significantly. Future Outlook of Hydrogen Cars It is unlikely that battery electric vehicles will be the only option available. In order to accomplish our carbon-neutral goals, people must adopt a diversified approach that includes a variety of alternative fuel sources. At the moment, hydrogen is the most important and well-established alternative fuel alongside battery-powered EVs. As the most abundant element in the universe, hydrogen holds immense promise as a fuel cell-based hydrogen ecosystem. Fuel cell systems use hydrogen to generate energy and the only byproduct is water vapor, which is harmless to the environment. Fuel cell technology, in contrast to batteries, can be scaled up to power passenger vehicles as well as buses, ships, and trains. Hydrogen can even be used to power urban air mobility in the future. However, there are still obstacles to overcome, just as there are with battery electric vehicles. These include the production, storage, and distribution of hydrogen, as well as development of a fueling infrastructure for both consumer and commercial use. People will not purchase hydrogen-fueled vehicles if hydrogen refueling stations are not readily available, and businesses will not create refueling stations if they don't have consumers that own hydrogen-fueled vehicles. There are around 40 to 50 hydrogen vehicle fueling stations in the United States, with almost all of them located in California. For infrastructure and carbon neutrality, the state strongly promotes both the commercial and public sectors to use hydrogen technology. The reality is that we will only be able to achieve our aim of lowering global carbon emissions if we use a variety of clever solutions. In order to improve the freedom of movement for everybody, electrification and hydrogen will both play critical roles as economically feasible energy sources. The Conclusion in the battery-powered electric vehicle market, Tesla and its rivals dominate the argument over who will control the future of automobiles. But hydrogen vehicles, green transportation technology is making inroads in the United States. In addition to being the most plentiful element in the universe, hydrogen is also the purest form of fuel available, having been used to power engines as far back as 1807. When it comes to transportation, hydrogen has yet to have a significant impact. The technology has been tested by plenty of manufacturers, and while some have committed to manufacturing hydrogen-powered vehicles in small quantities, widespread adoption appears to be years away. Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy Association has worked tirelessly with the congressional allies, member companies, and other industry organizations to ensure that the Fuel Cell Motor Vehicle Tax Credit, Hydrogen Fuel Infrastructure Tax Credit, and Excise Tax Credit for Liquefied Hydrogen are all extended for the foreseeable future. Safety is an issue because hydrogen is flammable, but so is gasoline and so are lithium-ion batteries, both very highly flammable. Additional safety issues are associated with transporting hydrogen for use at refueling stations where sensors are used to detect leaks. The good news is that in California, there have been no significant occurrences documented and the industrial sector has been carrying hydrogen for decades without problem. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Do you believe that the federal administration was unfair to hydrogen technology and that they were unduly sidelined? Or was it that the technology was not well established at the time, but so was the tech for batteries? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment down below. The videos are captivating and informative for Ninja, and it's great to know you're enjoying the content. Furthermore, Ninja has high hopes for the EV manufacturer Lucid Motors. When it comes to optimism, Ninja is not alone. Wall Street analysts are of the same opinion. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing is still free, and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.